Okay, guys, we need one more sketch, and we literally have 25 minutes before we go on. Any funny ideas? Anything? I really want to write something about birds. Now, I don't have any ideas past that, but I think that idea is just golden. Okay, okay. What if we had a live birth in a sketch? <laughs> what on earth would be funny about that at all? You know, the miracle of life. Life is funny. It would be ironic or something. You know, the hipsters would really love it. <laughs> I have a joke. Okay, an old guy and a pig walk into a bar, but twist. The old guy has polio. <laughs> <laughs> Mallory, we've talked about this. We can't make jokes about diseases. Let's go over the list one more time. <sighs> Actually, jokes about Max and Joey's sexuality are okay. <laughs> All right, I really want to write something that's like different and progressive yes. about birds. Okay, I can tell you're not with me. You just got to follow me, okay? So we're all wearing like the ghost sheets, you know, like the ones with the little eyes cut out. But we're not ghosts, we're owls. Yeah, and we start flapping around. We start flapping our arms around like this. We start, we start hooing while we're at it. We go, woo, woo. And we, one of us starts waddling like a penguin. We're like, what's going on? I don't know. And one of us takes out a feather and places it on the ground, like so. Wow, Jason, that was just so beautiful. Did you just come up with that? It just flew into my head and then flew right out. Whoa, like a bird. Yeah. Another joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Your father. <laughs> your father who? What do you mean? It's your father. Let me inside. Wait. What? <laughs> Can't you recognize the sound of your own father's voice? Have some respect for your elders. Your mother just died of polio. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that polio. <laughs> oh, I forgot not to joke about polio. It's a shame because the rest of it was really working. I was kind of confused. Well, anyways, what if we had a sketch set in the trenches of World War I, and there's blood and gangrene everywhere, and I'm missing a finger, no, and... No, 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 come on, guys. can you come up with something that's actually funny? Let's consult the idea jar. We're off to a great start. <laughs> Fatness is funny. Let's write a sketch about a fat burn victim. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we can't make jokes about this. We'll just depress people. Wait. Okay, I got it this time. What if this is the opening sketch? That sounds like a idea. No, 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 you don't get it. We're in it right now. Huh. And I have polio. <laughs> Chad was murdered. Yeah, Billy. Chad totally got his ass kicked in that dance off. He was slain. <laughs> no, guys, he passed away. <laughs> yeah, he straight up passed. Oh, and then he got those dope dance moves. Yeah, because he died. <laughs> if I were Chad, I don't think I'd be able to handle myself after getting wrecked like that. Yeah. He won't be able to. You know why? Because he is dead. True. True. Yeah, guys, Dare totally broke Chad's ankles with those dabs. No, Chad was hit by a bus. It broke every bone in his body, including his ankles. Chad hit that bus driver on point. Oh, no, the bus driver hit Chad. <laughs> Stop hyping me up. A person died. His body is still there. Look at him. 
Jack is lying there. I bet he won't even get up. <laughs> get up, Chad. Oh, you just kicked a dead body! <laughs> Evidence! There's Ten literally feet. white tape around it. See? The police have been here for a while. Guys, I just spoke with the police. Finally, someone who knows what's actually happening. They asked me what I saw, but I didn't see anything through the crowd. Then they asked Anthony. All he said was that he saw Chad get mad crushing that day! Oh, dude! Destiny? Listen. Chad was hit by a PBTA bus immediately after the dance-off. Everyone here saw what happened. You were literally there watching. Uh, nope. I don't remember any of that. All I remember is Chad getting his ass beat in the dance oh, Has anybody noticed that he's actually dead? Finally, someone who can put these kids in their right minds. Kids, this is not something to joke about. I have confirmation from the South Deerfield Police Department coroner that Chad is declared dead. To recap, he was killed tonight at 10.34 p.m. after suffering many broken bones, including broken ribs. He punctured a lung, causing him to suffocate to death. I didn't realize. Yeah, but he totally got crushed in that dance off before. Did you see that? Takes me back to my days at UMass. <laughs> Shotgun. No, you didn't. You're still on the sidewalk. You gotta be on the same surface as the car. That's not the rule. You just have to be in line of sight of the car, which I was. Shotgun no battle? Shotgun no battle, no contest. Shotgun no battle, no contest. Shotgun court. Shotgun no battle, no contest. What, what shotgun court? for Honorable Judge Everton. You may be seated. Your Honor, according to the Dibs and Regulations Act of 1996, a party may only call shotgun while on the same surface as the vehicle, as was my client in this case. While true, Your Honor, the Awkwardest Amendment of 2002 states otherwise, requires all members of an awkward love triangle to be seated in the back seat of the vehicle together. And is there such a love triangle here, Counselor? I call Matt, Natalie, and Mallory to the stand. Oh no. Place your hands on the iPhones. Do you solemnly swear to give the process of deciding who rides shotgun an irrational amount of attention in a social setting? I, I do. do. What is happening? Mallory, you have feelings for Matt, don't you? I, um... I... That's a yes. I didn't say yes. Let the record show Miss Call did not say yes, but we all know she's crushing on Matt hard. <laughs> and Natalie, you also have feelings for Matt, don't you? Well, well jinx! <laughs> Let the record show Natalie's been jinxed and no longer can testify. <laughs> oh wait! I have a coke. It doesn't matter, Ashley. No love triangle exists here, and even if it did, you wouldn't hear it from me. Matt, you have feelings for both Natalie and Mallory, don't you? No. Dang it. I've seen enough that the awkwardness and that amendment applies. The three of you must now sit in the back seat together as you all try to get the seatbelts buckled. Now, counselor, look, at this point, it looks like no one will have the front seat. Normally, yes, Your Honor, but I would like to submit evidence that last Thursday, Mallory sent out a chain email to all her friends wishing her good luck for a whole week. It might be enough. And Matt neglected to share that very same email. 
You, Matt, are a menace to society. Okay, Your Honor. Although my client was the weak link last week in Mallory's chain letter, that is no circumstance for conviction. And at 11-11 last night, my client made a wish to ride shotgun in Jason's car today. That, um, is the lamest wish ever, but yes. And by saying it out loud, you have made it null and void. Dang it! If there are no further arguments... Wait! My client demands verdict by game of mash. <gasps> no one has evoked that since the early 90s, but... If you insist. Oh, punch monkey yellow! Front seat to Mallory. <laughs> hey, uh, mind if I take a seat here for a bit? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Mind if I get some things off my chest to you? You my guest, of course. All right. The hardest part about being a mass murderer isn't really the murdering part. It's the mass. It's the pace you gotta keep up. The sheer volume of murder. Because the funny thing about killing, after the first time you've killed, the second time is easy. The third time you start to get cocky, so you gotta be careful not to make any dumb mistakes. By around the seventh time, you're likely to find yourself in a little bit of a rut. So you might want to get artistic with it, you know? Like uh, cutting off the middle toe of each victim, so you'd be known as the middle toe murderer. I don't know. At that point, it just seems like showboating. I mean, at a point, you gotta ask yourself, who am I doing this for? Am I doing this for myself or for the press? <sighs> By around the 20th time, you're probably gonna be sick of the whole thing. I mean, sometimes I don't even wanna look at another dead body. I feel like, I feel like if I even see a chainsaw, I'll scream. <sighs> it's like what happened the other day. I had just finished ending a human life in a senseless act of violence when I ran into this friend of mine from high school and he asked me, Hey, what are you doing? So I asked myself, what have I been doing? What am I doing with my life? I mean, am I going to be doing this at 50? Where is this leading? Sometimes, I really do feel like I should just go back to college. <laughs> that feels a lot better, actually. Hello and welcome to the comment section. A show that takes a closer look at what people write below articles and videos on the internet. Now tonight, we've got some of the more prolific commenters on the web. They've been posting anonymously for years. But tonight, we get to meet the people behind the comments. Our first guest is Matthew Knox, otherwise known by his internet handle, XXX Death by Farts XXX. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> There's that snark. Uh, now, Matthew, some of your comments can be construed as a bit negative. Uh, for example, under a video clip of a 10-year-old girl singing the Star Spangled Banner, you wrote, Ha ha, epic fail, you loser, you suck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and under a video of a horse rescuing its owner from a fire, you wrote, Mad gay, yo. What was gay about that? Uh, I don't know. The horse? Duh. Oh, and last night, you went after an elderly lady. She was dancing at her grandson's fourth birthday party, and you commented, Ha ha, dumbass old lady, her hat fell off, kill yourself. Hey, I just call them like I see them. That and the fact that you'll never meet any of these people, so there will never be any consequences. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got that old lady with us here tonight. What? Yeah. No. Hi, Miss Heffernan. You want to come out here and shame him? No, no, you're totally nice. You think my teeth are bad and I should kill myself? No, no, you should keep living. Well, here's my comment for you, young man. I think you're rotten. Ugh. Our next guest is Carl Durbin, otherwise known online as Ultimate Stud Too Good To Be True. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, can I leave? <laughs> no, you stay quiet. Uh, now, Carl, sometimes you comment on other people's comments. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I don't even look at the source material. I just wait for somebody to make a, a sincere point and then write something back like, uh, learn to spell dweeb, or you suck big ones in all caps. <laughs> nice. Right, but 
most of the time you just write the word boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it's kind of my thing. We actually have a list of things you wrote boobs under. Uh, here is a photo of Margaret Thatcher, uh, a woman interviewing another woman, uh, a robbery, and a song sung by Miss Piggy. So, how do you decide how many O's to put in boobs? Well, it's the size. The size. The size of the boobs? Ah. And what does your girlfriend think of that? Well, actually, I don't have a girlfriend. Yeah, I know. I was just kidding. <laughs> so our final guest is Jennifer Evans, a.k.a. Da Troop. Uh, now, Jennifer, most of your comments promote your political agenda, is that correct? Uh, for example, under a video of a bear falling out of a tree and onto a trampoline, you wrote, Obama is our first Nigerian president. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, and under a video of a bride tripping at her own wedding, you wrote, I hate illegals. Illegals suck. Yes, Sam, that's what I said. And under a video tribute, you wrote, 9-11 is an inside job. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. So, tell me, what exactly are your political views? Well, they're correct, or I wouldn't have said them. They were correct. Gone. All right. Why spread them all over the internet? Well, you see, I'm a lawyer by day, and I feel very constricted at work, and the internet's a nice outlet for my emotions. Ah, I see. And are you really a lawyer? Yeah, no, I didn't think so. So, at this point in the show, gang, we're just going to have someone come out here and punch all you in the gut. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. I really don't like myself. Hi, I'm Tommy. Hi, I'm Tommy. Hi, I... Uh oh. Hey, listen, I agree with their political beliefs. I don't want to hit them. Well, they called the office overrated. Well, in that case... <laughs> well, that's the whole show. See you next time. Bye-bye! gentlemen of the jury, we have heard ironclad evidence, we've received eyewitness testimony, we've watched surveillance footage, we have even received the signed confession from Mr. Picklecopter himself, admitting that on the night of May 30th, he did in fact murder his pregnant wife and dump her body in the Oak Ridge Quarry. In a minute, you folks are going to get up, you're going to walk in that jury room, and you're going to return here with a verdict. But before you do, I want you to take a moment. And I want you to think. I want you to think about poor Mrs. Picklecopter and that baby she never got to have. They're not here to speak for themselves today. That's your jobs. Thank you. The prosecution rests. The defense will now make its closing statements. <laughs> Hi. I'm not going to stand here and bore you with the details of who probably killed who. The prosecution has done an excellent job at laying out the case against my client. I just want to say that, wouldn't it be crazy if despite all that evidence, you still came back with a not guilty verdict? It'd be crazy. It'd be huge news. It'd be on every channel in the country. Everyone would be trying to get an interview with you. Everyone would be like, hey, how'd you make that decision? You'd probably get your own press secretary. Objection. Mr. Lawyerstein, the jury. I would like the jury to disregard all the defense's previous statements. As would I. Good. Good. It's a fair call. It's a fair judge. I'm proud to say that that was a test. And you all passed. Can we move this along, sir? Okay. I've said my piece. In a minute, you're going to get up, go back there, and decide guilty or not guilty. 
but as you're about to write down your verdict, I feel it is my duty to inform you that in exactly five seconds, it will officially become opposite day. Objection. Lawyer Steen, I will not allow that kind of mental trickery in my courtroom. I would like the jury to know that it is not, in fact, opposite day. That's not right, Your Honor. Lawyer Steen, you tell these people that it is not opposite day. It's not opposite day. Thank you. You're not welcome, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'd like you to know that it is not opposite day. And whatever verdict you come back with will literally be interpreted as the verdict. You guys not get that? Lawyer Steen, I will hold you in contempt. Uh, thank you. I mean, boo. Sit down. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like to apologize for everything that has happened here today, and I would like you to ignore everything that the defense has said here today. And I'd like you to know that it's not opposite day. Does everyone understand? Are there any questions? So it's not opposite day. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Your Honor, let me take a shot at this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defense is wrong. It is not opposite day. What are you doing? Shh, I got this. However, opposite day does not start in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. one. Jinx. Personal jinx. You can't speak until I say your name. Lawyer Steen, I will hold you in contempt. contempt. Double jinx. Neither of you can speak until I say your name. All right. Now we're going to do court my way. The Lawyer Steen way. All right. Music on. No? No music? OK. Ladies, tops off. No? I guess we can't do that. OK. I'm just going to pack up. So am I free to go? Mr. Peter Pecker. Pickle copter. You. What really is freedom? So this skit is a little bit different. Uh, the way this works is that every time they break, they will have to start the skit over again. And as you can tell already, there might be some things that might not make that too hard. Morning, Preston. Morning, Pete. And pom pom pom, pom okay? Cover the plaster. I was pruning my petunias and I accidentally punctured my pinky. Anyway, it looks like our week is, is pretty tough. Pardon. I'll repeat. It looks like our week is pretty tough. We got a problem here, Pete. We have a double. Come on, Preston. Come on, see. <laughs> Your problem okay is covering them plaster. I was pruning my petunias. I accidentally punctured my pinky. Anyway, it looks like our week is pretty packed. Pardon? I'll repeat. It looks like our week is pretty packed. <laughs> We got a problem here, Pete. Why? Why? Come on, Preston. Come on, Pete. The pump okay is covered in plaster. I was putting. <laughs> Come on, 
I'll, I'll just wait. They'll find me. Oh God. Stuck in the auditorium. Okay. I need to figure out a way out here. I gotta get a game plan. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make shelter. That's shelter. America. Would you look at that? I got shelter. Hmm. Spacious. Twenty minutes later. It's been twenty nine days. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be graduating with my class. There's been no sign of human contact. One time I, I heard the, the door shake, but it was, it was no one. I, I, I wish I could be with my classmates today. That they're all having a great time walking down accepting their diplomas. They all used to call me Baby Face McGee because you know, I couldn't grow a beard. But uh, today I've, I've made shelter. I've, I've, I've survived. Today, today I'm a man. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, no, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just say it normally. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, Mac. So, I'm Mac. It's my first year in Fred, but I'm the best. That's Mac. Okay, different approach. Brilliant idea. Broadway is a joke. Oh my god. Yes, like that again. Oh my god. Okay. I hate bathroom campers. They're the people who come in and they just sit here until you leave and it makes everyone uncomfortable because all you want to do is come in and like do your thing and get out. But they just sit here and wait for you to leave and it's so weird. Welcome to Mikasa. I just really like my private time, and the bathroom is the only place I can get that. So I made my own space. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I wanna go to bed. I had a little drink, but now I don't know where to go. Look, look at, look at me. 
Come on, let's over here. No, so where are you, where are you going? I'm, I'm over here. No, no, no. Fella, are you forgotten here too? Just like me? The janitor was doing what to you? Oh, God, I can, I can tell you're not like the water bottles. You're, you're, you're special. You, I, I will call you Kenny. I'm, I'll be your family. I won't let anyone hurt you. How, how, how did I get stuck in here? Well, I was a young boy, straight A's, a great gal, and a college scholarship that you wouldn't believe. Everything going for me, Kenny. I made the biggest mistake of my life. We were just kids, Kenny. We were bored in the hallway, like most kids. Trying to think of stuff to do, you know? I just said, hey, hey, why don't, why don't we play a good old game of hide and seek? It wasn't good. Running down the hallways, I could hear them counting. 25, 26. I was getting, I was getting nowhere. I couldn't find anywhere to hide. 27, 28. I was, my mind was racing. I didn't know where to go. 29, and I saw, I saw the auditorium door. So I ran in. 30, I was safe. So I thought, you see, Trapped in here ever since. I haven't had anyone to talk to and to share my feelings with. No one to love. But that's all changed now. I have you. Well, there's always a crush in Fred. I mean, like, obviously there's something going on between Darian and Emily. Uh, it just kind of happens. There's not really much you can do about it. Start practicing bow. Woo! Woo! 
I really like Fred. Something I can really get excited about. The younger kids, you know, they really get into it. And like, we don't get a lot of like energy from the older kids. But I mean, the older kids, like they have all these commitments and stuff. The younger kids, I mean, not to be rude, but like they don't have lives. So they don't have to work. They don't have, you know, AP classes. They just kind of come and hang around the school all day. So we like to take advantage of that and uh, implement it in our show, so. Look what I got, Kenny. I got sustenance. Oh boy, I'm gonna need all the strength I can muster. We're, we're going to the tech booth today. It's taking a lot of preparation and it, it might be a little bit risky. Probably get in through the window or, or something. Why? What? What else am I gonna do here, Kenny? I'm stuck all by myself. I'm, I've got, I got nothing to do but talk to a damn cop and... I didn't mean that, Kenny. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just felt like I'm, like I'm, like I'm losing my mind. Kenny? No, Ke Kenny, no! No, 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 no! I didn't mean it, Kenny, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry, Kenny, no, no, no! <laughs> You're gonna get a proper burial. That's 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 what you'll get. That's that's what you'll get. What happened here? Oh my god, it smells disgusting. Who the hell left this kind of mess? Oh, We've been looking for you. Where have you been? How long has it been? Well, speaking as Fred starts in, at five, uh, we started that game of hide and seek like 20 minutes ago. We couldn't find you, so we came to Fred early. It's about 4.40. It's, it's been 18 years. That's your age. But, but Kenny. Who's Kenny? It doesn't matter. why we came here again? It's our senior year, Chelsea. We've got to do something. You're right, you're right. I mean, Sam seems like she's in a good mood. Normally, she's just awful. <laughs> That's it, Chelsea. You're getting into it. Um, thanks. Are you kidding me, Sandra? Vegan ice cream? Could you get any more pretentious? Shut up, Katie. No one even invited you. You snuck in through the bathroom window. I hate her. She's, She's such, such a, a bitch. bitch. I never knew they had beef. <laughs> we all do. Jessica, you fat cow, get over here! Whoa, Val, that's not cool. <laughs> Calm down, Chelsea. It's why we're here. What are you talking about? We all get together and say everything we've been wanting to say throughout high school. Eat ice cream and cry. <laughs> You're kidding. That's insane. <laughs> you're really awful. Whoa, Val. What happened to you? I only did that. <laughs> oh my god. Don't say that. You know what? I'm shutting this down. Where's Sam? Sam! Yeah, Chelsea. 
This needs to end right now. You gotta send everybody home. What? What are you talking about? The party's not over! You know what, Chelsea? You're just a loser who's a waste of air. How about instead of yelling at me, you go back to the dumpster that you been in? If you don't shut this down, I'm gonna tell Principal Lopez. Who wants pizza, girl? <laughs> <laughs> Principal Lopez, what are you doing here? It's a school-sponsored event. I'm glad to see you can make it, Chelsea. They've been a uh, talking a lot about you. <laughs> oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. What's the matter, Chelsea? I thought you'd be into this. You're into that let's watch the world burn kind of thing. Hey, uh, Chelsea thought I'd let you know with your appearance and smell you're positively the most disgusting person I've ever met. Love ya. You know what? Fine. Chelsea! <laughs> Cheryl! You take AP courses, but I'm convinced that you can't even read. Woo. Sydney, you dyed your hair a month ago, so now I can say you're a bitch and your ombre's bad. <laughs> Sandra, you talk so loud, I could shoot myself in the back of the classroom and no one would hear me over your big, fat mouth. Katie, you ain't the soccer queen. Really, think about the last time we saw you score a goal. Val, I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but you won prom monarch because your mom stuffed the ballot boxes. You aren't that special. Gail, no room for you to talk. Girl, you look like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> and finally, Sam, you're going to grow up to be a failed housewife, divorced by the age of 30. What did you just say to me? Uh, what? Yeah, Chelsea, what did you just say to us? This girl cannot be serious. I, uh, was just trying to fit in. Too far. Hey, uh, how's it going there, uh, champ? Oh, hey, how's it going there, killer? How are you? Hey, I'm actually doing pretty good. Say, how's your folks been there, uh, compadre? Oh, you know, we're getting along. Uh, how was yourself there, sport? Uh, thanks for asking. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, how's the uh, old workplace been there, uh, buckaroo? You know, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've had our tough times, but, you know, as employees, we're really coming together now. How about yourself there, um, uh, cowboy? Yeah, I'm really happy to hear that, man. I mean, I know there was that whole labor dispute a while ago. <sighs> Mess, I know, right? Um, what about, uh, I heard you had a kid recently. How's, how have they been there, uh, chum? Oh, you know, it's nothing but a little ball of sunshine that keeps you up all night and throws up all over the place. It's okay. awesome. So, um, how, how about you and your lady there, um, uh, Simba Buckaroo? <laughs> My well, lady and I have been pretty good. Uh, we she actually just found out that she's pregnant. Oh she's my really, god. Really Yo, pregnant. Broski, congratulations. Thanks, man. Hey, Jake. Hey, Joey, what's up? Oh, dude, what's going on, stranger? Okay, see you later. Yes, yeah, I was Joey. Yeah, yeah this is pretty good. No, he's a good guy. Look, so, um, hey, so uh, my, my company and I are doing this, this thing this weekend with uh, softball. What'd you think about joining us there, um, Spartan? Ah, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun there. <coughs> Ranger? <laughs> Listen here. Slugger. <laughs> I, uh, I want to I make sure you're doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for, I mean, I, I, I really <coughs> appreciate your interest in my uh, well-being. But uh, how about you, uh, friend? <laughs> you know, we're, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm dealing with my, myself, me, myself, and I, but, uh, you know, we're getting along. How about you there, um, sister? <laughs> well, that's good. Um, how are you there, uh, brother? 
Hey, um, uh, if I don't say so myself, I'm doing all right. How about yourself there? Uh, uh, challenger. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I feel like we're going in a bit of a circle here, but I, I really think you might need to check your hearing. You know what? I really got to say this right now. Thank you for being there for me. Dad. <laughs> Son. I can't believe you dislocated your shoulder at the gym. Maddie, the gym is a place people go to push themselves. You slipped by the water fountain. I was thirsty from working hard. Can you help me fill this out? Of course. Let's see, full name. Stacy Jessica Harkey. Date of birth. Uh, you don't remember my birthday? Is that so surprising? It's today! Oh! Happy birthday! <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, uh, emergency contact. Oh, um, I don't know. How, how about you? Uh, I mean, only if you want to. Mm, it doesn't have to be permanent or anything. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, it's just a lot of responsibility. Well, I figured you could handle it. Yeah, I just, uh, what about, what about Bella? Bella would make a great emergency contact. Yeah, I didn't think about Bella. All right, well, I'm just gonna write down Bella's information. Uh, any allergies? So you don't think you'd be more convenient? Uh, hay fever. You have hay fever, right? You brought me here today. Yeah, but it was omelet night in the hospital cafeteria, so I was coming here anyways. <laughs> Maddie, we've been roommates for a really long time now. I just feel like this is the next step. Wouldn't this be more fitting for a family member? They're on the other side of the country. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Boyfriend, boyfriend. Do you have a boyfriend? You don't have a boyfriend. You haven't had one in a long time. I knew that. Um, what about uh, ex-boyfriend? You do. That would be bad. I'm dating him. <laughs> It's just a really big step, and I feel like Bella would be a better fit. Maddie, why are you avoiding this? Are you somebody else's emergency contact? <laughs> Maddie? I didn't want you to find out like this. Who is it? Jillian. Jillian? Jillian, who's lived with us for two months, Jillian! She had to go to the ER. She swallowed a poisonous spider on purpose. How cool is that? Okay, I do want details on that later. But why can't we both be your emergency contact? It's, it's just difficult. What if you're both in an emergency at the same time and I have to choose one to save and let the other die? That's so unrealistic. Is it? Is it really? Have you seen The Dark Knight? One explosion and one of you gets horribly disfigured and if anything happened to Jillian's long, gorgeous hair, she'd just die. So it's a lose-lose. Okay. So, just like that, you say no. Well, don't be like that. We'll, we'll still be roommates. Which is just an empty term now! Was it a very meaningful term to begin with? Maddie? to be there for each other. They're supposed to look out for one another. And they're supposed to say yes to being each other's emergency contact. You know what? You want to know the real reason? Fine. I'll tell you. I'm scared. <laughs> of what? What if you swallow soap and I don't know the number for poison control? What if you put your hand on a hot stove and I'm not there to say, that's hot, no touch. <laughs> Maddie, I'm 18 years old and not a toddler. Well, it sure hasn't stopped you before. Okay, listen. 
This is something that means so much to me. I know you're scared, but this means so much to me. And if anyone's going to have my back, it's going to be you. You mean that? Of course. Thanks, girl. Oh, oh God. That's a, that's a bad area. You got me. I'll do it. Really? You're the best. Man, Bella is going to be so disappointed. Maddie, we don't have a roommate named Bella. I know. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there you are, Megan! Okay, so I've been talking to some boys at this party, and they are totes cute. Carrie, I told you, Billy and I just started dating. I'm only here to keep you company. Oh, look, here they come. Hey, so uh, is this your friend, Carrie? Yeah. <laughs> no, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> I don't mind. Gross! Get out of here! Oh my gosh, Megan, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean you to be so pushy. It's fine. <laughs> hey, Harry! Glad you could come to my party. Hey. Hey. Oh, is this your friend? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> I'm Matt. Megan. Oh, oh. <coughs> so, uh, where are you from? I'm so sorry. I can't do this. I have a boyfriend. Yeah, no. Well, hey, I wasn't trying to. I can't. Okay. Well. <laughs> uh, well, it was a pretty, uh, pretty nice to, uh, pretty, pretty nice to meet you. <laughs> Megan, I think you're taking this a little bit too far. Are you kidding me? He was so flirty. Hey, would you ladies like some snacks? Sure, thank you. No, I have a boyfriend. Oh goodness, no. We're Matt's parents. Do you girls need anything? <laughs> yeah, I need you to understand that I have a boyfriend! You got that! Megan, what has gotten into you? I have to get out of here. I never should have come in the first place. What are you doing? Oh my god, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> what is your problem? Sir? No, I think five's gonna be enough. Oh. Hey, Jason, Jason, how's it going? Hey, man? man, how's it going? I'm actually doing pretty good. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. about, I'm actually about to meet Whitney here on a dinner date. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm real excited yeah, about this one. That's real. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's funny you should say that because I'm actually here on Whitney's behalf. Oh, is she gonna be late? Uh, not exactly. You mind if I sit down? Yeah, sure. At least until she gets here, right? Yeah, I just got up. <clears throat> uh, look, Jason, we've been dating for a while now. Excuse and... me? Oh, I'm sorry. That's just what she wanted me to tell you. Oh, on the paper, right. Yeah. Proceed. Uh, and things just aren't working out between us. Well, why not? Oh, hang on. I'm getting there. Uh, you know, it just seems like we've become so distant lately. You know, we never really talk anymore. I know you've been well, really, been really busy, busy lately. lately. Oh, that was kind of... <clears throat> I'm going to skip over this next part. This looks kind of... No, I, I need to hear it. Well, we talked about the body odor issue. I'm sorry, man. I shouldn't be here. I should just go. Well, what like, about you? What? I mean, 
her. She never wants to do the things I want to do. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but a monster truck rally is exactly my idea of a romantic evening. Well, I'm sorry. I can't afford to buy you flowers <laughs> Are you trying to make me feel guilty? No, I just wish Don't you Don't try and turn this back on me. I poured my heart into this relationship. <laughs> Look, just don't be upset. I am not upset. What else did she Shh. say? She wanted an awkward pause here. <laughs> Don't touch! Oh, actually, you know what? Actually, no, if we smooth, like, yeah, no, yeah. This, this might be a little bit better. Now you're like, no! I'm just so stressed out these days, you know? I just, my sister and I don't get along. I hate my job and my dog died. Wait a second, wait a second. She doesn't have a job. I know, I was talking about me. Oh, come on, man. Okay, stick I'm to sorry. the paper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just think we need some time apart to think things over. Well, all right. If that's what you want. You're not even going to fight for me? I've given you the best years of my life, Jason Gray. Is this all you have to show for it? Honey. <laughs> Don't you I honey me! <laughs> this is one sweet nectar you won't be tasting ever again. What does that even mean? No. I don't know either. Nasty. Ew, gross. I did not see that one coming. It's no big deal, guys. It's just a game, and it's no problem. I've just been walking around a Walmart bathroom all day. Ew. If you say so. Oh, ah, this game is crazy. You guys are crazy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my okay. gosh. Francis, settle down. <sighs> Princess, you haven't gone yet. Truth or dare? Wow. Me? Yep. Well, I've never played truth or dare before. Well, I don't know what to choose. Truth or dare. Truth or dare. Oh, um, I don't know what to pick. Oh, I guess I'm going to go with dare. Okay, girl, let's do this. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm ready. Anything anything you tell me to do, I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, wow. I'm scared. I dare you to kiss Joe on the cheek. <laughs> oh, wow. It's no big deal, Francis. Oh, wow. Put it there, Francis. <laughs> You've just got to do it, Francis. For this one, I've got a doozy for you. Yeah. Okay. I do need to like pick up this ball <laughs> and then like sniff it. <laughs> Roll it across the ground. <laughs> Francis, that's not really a dare. So you can do something that like pushes me a little. Okay. Okay. Oh, I've got one. <laughs> Do you need to like put your hand on his face and like be like, ew, your face is gross and stupid, but you don't mean it because it's a dare. But like, you're like, Meh, but it's a dare, so you don't mean it. <laughs> Francis, that's not really a dare either. So a dare should like 
push me past my comfort zone. Yeah, like what were you doing with the shoe licking? Oh, okay, okay. <gasps> okay. <laughs> oh, I got one for you. You ready? I dare you to like, I dare you to like, like this. <laughs> Francis, you gotta pick it up a notch a little. Okay. Elevate. Elevate, got it. Okay. Um, I dare you two to like, <laughs> to, to like clap hands. <laughs> but then, also like clap <laughs> feet. <laughs> but then, do it at the same time. <laughs> do you get it? Do you get it? Francis, you don't understand how this game works at all. A dare is supposed to be something you're scared of. Really, do your worst. You got it. Okay. Okay, so you guys will do anything I say, no matter what. Truth or dare, you'll do what I say. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I dare you to jump out the second story window and land on your head on the bike rack. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it's more dare-like. But guys, I'll die! No! You said you'd do it! Do it or dare! Oh my god! My leg! Thank goodness he's alive. What? Francis, you are straight crazy. <laughs> I'm not crazy. This game is crazy. <gasps> How about we play another one? I've got a juicy one. Uh, actually, I think we need to go. How about we play Kiss, Mary, Kill? Me, Carrie, Kate. Who do you kiss? Who do you marry? And who should I kill? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we bring a little culture to our show. Yes, to show how to properly groom and take care of your emu, we've invited a very special guest. From the Baffin Island Bird Sanctuary and Lizard Nursery, Professor Rod Hull. Thank you, thank you, and good evening. To answer all of you who have written in tonight, I'm going to show you how to groom and take care of your emu. Now, for all of you with emus at home, grooming the feet is of primary importance. And to groom the soles of the feet, I use an ordinary broom. Can I have an ordinary broom, please? Yes, uh, ordinary broom. Just like that. <laughs> you know. This is why little puffs are from me. Always remember that. Now, take the feet, take this ordinary broom, set it here on this here table. Then I get a firm grip on it. And the next thing I do is I straddle the broom, like so, and I take the emu's leg. What I'm going to do next is rub the broom lightly up and down the emu's foot, yeah. What's going into you? Gosh, you didn't like the broom. Anyways, moving smartly on to the next bit. Uh, the next thing we do is we take a uh, bowl of warm soapy water and we soak the emu's foot in the bowl of warm soapy water. Can I have a bowl of warm soapy water, please? Just uh, right over here. No problem. Just uh, this guy. This is why you don't pass a bowl of warm soapy water in front of an emu. Anyways, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the emu's foot and Get ready for this, it's real fun. I'm gonna put the emu's foot into the bowl of warm soapy water, like so. Because <laughs> he uh, didn't want his foot in the bowl of warm soapy water. Okay, well, moving on. The next thing I do after the soaking is I then take my special emu dusting powder, and what I'm going to do is just lightly dust the plumage of the emu. Dusting powder, please. Oh, come on. Don't be scared. Right down there. Come on. No. What I'm gonna do now is gonna take the emu dusting powder. I'm just gonna dusty, dusty. Nice and little lightly, lightly. Okay, well, for the last bit, to uh, keep the plumage of a 
nice, neat, groomed emu uh, from getting too ruffled, I take my emu net and I cover the emu in the emu net to keep the plumage from being ruffled. Could I see the emu net, please? Oh, come on. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Excuse me, buddy, have you seen a young lady around here? Uh, uh, well, no, I haven't. I made a date using this computer dating service, and we're supposed to meet here. Oh, t no kidding, really. I'm waiting for a computer date myself. I can't wait to see my date. I, I told the computer exactly what I wanted. And what did the computer do? It washed my mouth out with soap. <laughs> Really, this is a big night for me. The computer said it found somebody whose personality and interests are just what I'm looking for. She's supposed to be wearing a badge number, J49. Oh. Well, that's, that's strange. The computer said my date was supposed to be wearing number R85. No offense, buddy, but I think there's been some sort of mistake. Oh, uh, no, no. No offense taken. I just can't believe this happened. What a drag. My whole Saturday night shot. Look, I, I even brought flowers. You, you might as well take them since I've got no one else to give them to. Oh, they're my favorite roses. <laughs> well, you might as well have these because I don't know what else to do with them. Carnations? How'd you know? Oh, darn that computer. <laughs> I, I can't understand it. It said it found someone with a brown hair, a fair complexion, and blue eyes. Well, as a matter of fact, I happen to have brown hair, a fair complexion, and very blue eyes. <laughs> They're awfully blue, aren't they? <laughs> what a mess. I paid $50 to that computer. I went out, I, I bought a new suit. I'm so mad I could... How tall are you? Five foot nine. With or without heels. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm just so mad I can't think straight. It's such a great evening planned. Candlelight dinner at Antoine's, dancing at the Starlight Diner, and then back to my place for a nightcap. How many kids do you want to have? Three. Ah, just what I want. One of each. <laughs> What are the three most important qualities you look for in a date? 38, 24, 38. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is kind of weird. If, if you were a girl, I'd, I'd probably go for you. <laughs> Dang it. Why aren't you a girl? Well, if you don't know that, it shouldn't make a difference, right? You even have that sense of humor that I like. I can't believe this. My friend Norman used the same dating service, and you, you should have seen the girl he got. Well, anyways. Do you like to tango? I thought you'd never ask.
This show is entirely student run. So we pick a senior from the junior class to be director next year. So that's what we're gonna do right now. But right, can we get a drum roll? Oh, we just wanted to say thank you for being the most organized friend we've had in a long time.